Hey guys, so uh, as promised, it's taken me a little bit of time to get here, but I want to go ahead and do a quick rundown on uh, a couple of things that are optional for this uh, intro to WW2 k Highlight Reel. Um, this is a video I've actually been kind of excited to make, and uh, I'm glad that AJ Young mentioned it because it's something that I think that everybody, maybe not everybody has a grasp on, but it's something that everybody can definitely benefit from. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on some of the things that I use to record primarily uh, hard hardware type things. Um, break down a little bit of differences because I know some people don't use this. Some people use uh, the in-game DVR that, or excuse me, the uh, console DVR that the PlayStation offers. Um, the uh, Xbox one's a little bit different. I've looked into it for some people that asked, and I wouldn't suggest doing it with the Xbox One game DVR because it records differently. Uh, PlayStation lets you record longer stretches on console. So uh, it's a good thing that I actually have the, the external capture device that I have. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and talk about that a little bit real quick. And then uh, we'll get to recording some matches, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of like live commentary as I'm recording. I'm not going to edit a whole lot out, so you can kind of see step by step how a lot of this comes out. And uh, uh, I didn't get a lot of questions leading up to this, but once the video is posted, uploaded, all that good stuff, uh, feel free to leave comments and questions from there, and we will kind of take it from there as much as we can. So basically, what's going to happen here is I'm going to break down the actual step-by-step -step recording process in match, show you a little bit of examples of what the game camera looks like itself and then what Highlight Reel looks like. So you can see differences firsthand because I think that's important to understand why Highlight Reel looks better than the actual game camera does. Secondly, um, I'm going to pull it up into Sony Movie Studio that I use to edit all my videos. And whichever editing software you use doesn't really matter. That part isn't as important. But what is important is that you see uh, how to work with separate tracks and make sure that like audio video things synchronize properly. That's the key to a lot of this. So anyway, I'm going to stop talking for a minute and uh, cut over to the next part of this video for you. Okay, so now that we're back here, uh, obviously you can see 2K19 is pulled up on the Xbox. Uh, everything that I do is on my HP Pavilion laptop. I do all my editing stuff there. I have OBS running. I use that to record audio sometimes. Uh, obviously, it's used for streaming primarily. But uh, I'm going to record, like I said, the live audio of me um, kind of trying to keep the commentary, the key points that I want to talk about as I'm recording and multitasking here. I want to kind of get those key points situated here and in, uh, in mind and in focus that way i i can uh really highlight certain things because i'm going to be talking a little bit about um you know just trying to get good camera angles is number one with highlight reel but also number two i'm going to do a brief introduction to uh spot editing and uh custom spots and stuff i know some people are interested in that kind of thing it's something that uh i've practiced that for a little while now and i think i've done pretty well with so anyway before we get to all that though this isn't going to take very long i just want to focus the camera down here real quick and this little thing here you can get a look at um is the hopog pvr rocket it's the uh, external recording device that i've used since around 2015 when i moved to xbox one um if you look a little closer here if you can see with the lighting or not but uh back here it's where the power cord's hooked up and it has actually two hdmi excuse me one's a hdmi in this goes to your xbox and or p p or excuse me, ps4 um either one the other one runs to your tv it's really easy to set up it does not actually uh require like an x an outlet power outlet it the power cord that you're seeing here next to the HDMI's, um, it powers off of your console. It's very easy to use. It actually also, if you look down a little bit closer here, it's also got a spot for a microphone over here. Um, and basically this red button up top is just, uh, you push that down to record. I have a 32 gigabyte 
a flash drive that I purchased with it that I use. Um, I think you can go up higher than that if needed, but I've always been able to record everything on the 32 gigabytes, no problem. But yeah, it has all these extra settings on it I don't really use. Uh, you can plug in a microphone and stuff to it. It also can be ran directly to your PC and uh, used for streaming or recording to the PC. But for me, recording it on the flash drive has been optimal and it, everything records in uh, 1080p MP4 files. So for me, that's the easiest way to switch it back and forth over. So anyway, with all that being said, let's get down to this. This video is probably going to run a little bit longer. I'm long-winded. I talk a lot. So now that that's all said and done, let's get to the actual bulk of this and uh, the purpose of the video. New to our brand of entertainment and say, right, this guys, is what so here WWE's we go. Uh, all about. First couple things Settle to in, note guys. here. This is going to be a blast to watch. The match started and rolling. Um, you can do this... You can do basic highlight reel things without using two controllers. Like you could do it AI versus AI if that's your interest. You could do it with one controller versus the AI. Um, but as a lot of people will tell you with recording these shows and um, trying to get things to a, to a cleaner level, it helps to practice and get used to doing this with two controllers. So that's something to definitely always keep in mind, um, especially when I start talking about more of the more like advanced uh, spot edits and stuff. Because a lot of that stuff, honestly, um, good luck trying to get the AI to cooperate with you. So anyway, um, first thing we're going to talk about here, mainly I think a big goal that everybody should have in mind when you're creating a call show is, uh, as you can see on screen right now, the HUD or the heads-up display. Um, for those of you who might not be video game knowledgeable to that degree, your heads-up display is all of the context on screen, like your health bar, stamina bar, your finishers, uh, even for like, I'll throw a punch here so you can see, like when it pops up with the, the reversal there. Uh, anything that pops up on screen, like that's your heads-up display. I think with call wrestling, and uh, some people will agree with me with this, that your heads-up display needs to be gone as much as possible. Uh, they get a little bit better with it, obviously. I think even now that I'm looking at it closer here on 2K19, it looks like they've moved it even further to the corners of the bottom of the screen, which is going to help cropping that out. Anyway, here's one thing I really want to talk about with this, with, as far as pilot reel goes, because this is a big thing for me, and I think people who pay close oh, what to an it uppercut. with your games will agree with this also. So I'm going to show you this first of all. Oh, did do it right. Give me one second here. Uh, oh, it's not going to let me do the uh, Collar and Elbow tie up that I'm trying to do. Anyway, um, I was going to do it with Collar and Elbow tie up. I'll do it with, with the uh, chain grappling here instead. So many of you guys are familiar with the, the chain grappling and the, uh, the lock at the beginning of the matches. The, the rest hold mini game like this is the same thing essentially. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and pause there so you can see. And when you pause, you want to go into highlight reel. I'm gonna highlight reel here. Just gonna take it back to uh it's like highlight reel and GK19 gives you a little bit more time. The clips on 2K, uh, 2K18 were a little bit underneath the uh, 20 second window. They're usually around 16 to 18 seconds, I want to think. So anyway, and it looks like also, I think Ray was telling me about this, or Sean, one of the two. But it looks like also that you can do your uh, camera positioning like you could on 2K17's highlight reel, which is also going to be helpful. Like I said, this is actually my first time actually opening up Highlight Reel on 2K19, so we'll see what, how it turns out. This might actually save us a lot of time. Um, I wonder if I'm going to be able to do the... Yeah, it looks like you're going to be able to do the preview right here in match, too. This is actually really nice. This is going to be able to save us a ton of time. So anyway, you see I'm kind of scrolling back and forth on the timeline here. Um, this is my point. Okay, so... Let me go ahead and I'll go ahead and hide the controls for a second. So what you're looking at right here on screen, this is the basic game camera. Uh, game cam is 
usually shorthand what I refer to it as. Um, so it's referred to in most other cases. Like I did some videos in the past on YouTube for using the Rockstar editor on GTA Online, GTA 5, and it's referred to as Game Cam. So that's kind of what I refer to this as. Game Cam, basically, uh, in any video game sense like this, you have no user input control over what the Game Cam does. The Game Cam stays usually locked in a static position like this, and uh, occasionally on the WW2K games, it will dynamically change to an alternate camera angle on its own, but rarely does it, especially like in a match, say if you're playing online, which is another thing I want to talk about for people who play online, do the player versus player type shows, uh, if you call those shows, um, you don't have highlight reel online, to my knowledge, so that's something else you should also consider. But anyway, um, in a lot of cases, you're stuck with this camera angle. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you might get those occasional camera cuts, but you're never going to get rid of the HDD unless you uh, turn it off or you zoom in past it on your editing. So anyway, here you're going to see um, Reed do a snap mirror to have an east and then put it in position for that arm bar. So what I want to show you is just an idea here, right? So you can see here he's got that like cravate style hold on him. He's getting ready to do the snap mirror. From here, Ray also mentioned um, in a question, I think, on the Discord about can you make the camera follow certain people? Yes, yeah, so when you go into the, cam the camera options here, it's just your right analog stick in, click it. Um, I have it targeted on read right now. What that does is mean the camera follows him based off of uh, his motions. You can also change it. So here we'll kind of sift through. You can see, and uh, now it's targeting Evan East. You can also make it target the uh, the referee, or if the commentators are ringside, it'll target them as well. Or you can do like a free camera. So what I'm going to do is just kind of zoom in a little bit here, so you can kind of get a better look at Evan East taking the snapmare bump. I mean, you can put the camera just about anywhere you want. Um, 2K18 got really nice with how close you could zoom this stuff in. So, I'm going to go about right here. I think this will be a pretty decent shot. I always try to kind of get the ropes a little bit out of focus if I can. Sometimes get the referee out of focus if I can. Anyway, so we're going <clears> to... <throat> as you can see here, you get a pretty good shot. Evan East in this snap mirror. I might actually go right here and leave the ropes in this shot. I think this is a better angle. So, anyway, what we're going to do is go back out. Um, well, maybe we can't do a preview from here. Thought we'd be able to do a preview from here. Let's see. Code. Highlight real clip. And then we'll name the clip. I usually just name them as uh, in sequential order. One, two, three, four, five. However many clips I need. So we'll encode it, I suppose. See if there's anything special that needs to happen with the encoding process. Uh, in 2K18, you couldn't do all the camera positioning like this during the match. So that's new. But it looks like... Yeah, it looks like we're still going to have to go back outside of Highlight Reel to actually preview that where you're going to record it. And uh, from there, you're going to... To be able to get the full the full screen preview of it, I don't see anywhere on here where it's going to let me preview it the way that I want. So anyway, that's that. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to another shot here. Basically, I hope for for a start that that kind of makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this hold up and. Uh, See, another another thing here. There he goes, oh, crashing the to the floor. The other side here. Some more ropes. Apron. <clears throat> I think. I don't think, I think he should get up. Setting it up here with the wake up time. I think highlight reel is, is absolutely important and incredible for what I'm about to do here with like a dive. Oh, what impact! The ropes, right? Excuse me. Yeah, there's a real Stefan Hilo there. 
And he's, he's got this great, like, selling... You know, the 2K19, the, the selling animations are, are so good. So anyway, we're going to go back into Highlight Reel now. And so for this, like, if I... Another thing that Highlight Reel is really good about is, like, so where I kind of goofed here and was hitting the ropes more than I needed to, you can just go in now, if you go into, like, your computer editing software as well, you can go in and you can cut all that out. You can cut that whole mess out there, and it'll make your matches look cleaner when you cut some of these things out. Or you can just cut to, like, a shot of Evan East or cut to a shot of the referee counting, a shot of the crowd. You can cut and do all kinds of things within the camera angles here. So anyway, um, like one of the things Ray was asking about, about the camera angle following people. Um, one of the things here, let me see. I'm going to go about right here, I guess. And then I'll show you how you can split. I think he mentioned that as well, how you can split stuff. So anyway, again, this is your generic game camera here. So what I want to do, so he hits the con helo there. And then here, they're both kind of double down. it looks like. Somewhere in this region here. So you got a few seconds of clip there. Okay, so what I want to do is go in, go to your camera controls again. And like I said, I have it focused on read now. So kind of find a good, decent looking angle that you want for it. I'm going to actually take it off a of read, though, because just the angle's not really working for me. Eh, this one might work. We'll go about here, maybe. Kind of zoom it out. You can also, again, you can put this as close or as far away as you want. But anyway, so we'll go about like right here, so you can see that from the opposite angle, uh, the opposite of the game camera, that is. And then I'll just show you the clip here. <clears throat> It'll let me preview it. Okay, you can't. So you have to leave the timeline up for you when you preview it in in this. Okay. So anyway, here um, you're going to just use your your maybe R two for you PlayStation guys or right trigger. Excuse me for Xbox guys. So you see here, I'm gonna just kind of running it through frame by frame slow motion. Hits the rope. Great shot. Great angle of him clearing the ropes there. Hitting Evan East. Landing. And this is why I stopped it on this frame here, okay? So this is a thing that I like to do a lot in Highlight Reel, especially now that this is giving me like 23 and a half seconds here. What I like to do is I'll stop right here. It says 1436 is like the frame the second that I'm on. I skip it with the right bumper. to be R1 for you if you're on PlayStation. I skip it a frame or a couple seconds forward, whatever it takes me to. And then I switch back to the first trim marking here. And I'll bump it there. So now you see where it jumped forward, where it's highlighted in red there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just kind of skim forward on my timeline. As you can see, both guys are in the selling animations there. And about right in here, in this little spot here, about 2186, you have Reed kind of starting to get up to a knee there. So right in here... You see both guys are clutching their abdomens. They're selling the pain from this this big spot. You kind of play with the camera a little bit. I like for like a selling kind of shot like this to kind of get real close because the game does a pretty decent job with uh, with the recognition facial gestures. My phone made a sound there. Siri was listening in for a second. Anyway, um, so yeah, you can zoom in pretty closely here. And we'll just go right here just for a start and see. And I'll do the same thing. I'll show you, show you roughly here where we're at. So that Conhilo connects. They're both down about right here. And then all of the timeline bar is going to be in the way. See it again here, kind of slow motion, frame by frame. Both guys are down. Evan East is clutching the face. Reed's slowly getting up, clutching the abdomen, the ribs there. And that's, you know, that's that's your, 
your highlight reel camera angle there. I think that should kind of give you a pretty good idea. I mean, look, you could also do the reverse shot of it here. I mean, like this is this shows you how close this lets you get. I mean, you can get right up on the guy if you really want to. There's all kinds of detail and things you can catch that way. But so you can go from like this angle here. Even this might be even better angle than that one. Yeah, we might go with this angle here. So anyway, both guys are down. Yeah, that's actually, I think, a better shot there. As you can see, like right here, as I'll rewind it again, you can see right here, he's got like the forearm across the ribs there, like he damaged his ribs on the landing. I think that's an even better shot. Otherwise, what you're, what you're needing to know is if I reset the camera, this is the reset camera here. I mean, look at this. This is as far out, and, and, and to the naked eye, to the untrained eye, this is fine. But, again, you have options where you can go in, go all the way in here. You can get a shot of these guys down. You can get a shot, you know, like maybe like from behind the crowd here if you wanted. You can zoom in and get your referee right here. You know, counting them both out. There's a lot of creative options and avenues here for you. The The key thing that I really want to get across on a highlight reel, to those who don't have a lot of experience with highlight reel, is that you have to just have a big imagination. And ultimately, that's like what Call is for us as wrestling fans, right? It's our imagining of wrestling the way that we would create a wrestling show. That's why this stuff is important. So anyway, let me back out of that, and I'm going to save this one as highlight reel clip number two. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my video editor, as I explained, and we're going to break this stuff down, how you line up the clips and make them synchronize and whatnot. This is going to be a full match. Again, this is just me kind of demoing some highlight real things for you. We got both guys in. I mean, look at this, like this is a great Ooh, shot there, like Evan, he's slowly getting up to one knee. That would have been a, a really good shot there. Bad spot for him to be in here, guys. He's got to do something to get back in this thing. You know, any of these, these things, like a guy like, drops to a knee like that, that he did on that, uh, on this one. He dropped to a knee on that, that arm strike there, like that's a, that's a, I think that's a cool spot. Ring presence, very impressive. Cool, Ravens three oh Rana spots in the game. Yeah. All right, so this will be a good one here. And you can see the selling there on Evan East again. The, the fantastic selling. I can't say enough about it in two K. Anyway, let me go here. We'll we'll start with this one. Same thing here. So we're gonna start it here about seven twenty. And you can, again, follow the game cam here and just see how the game cam stays in that one position. It kind of follows Evan East, but it's the most that it does. And we'll go to 23-20, just, just for reference. All right, so this is a really cool... This reminds me of, like, the uh, Nintendo 64, like, WCW NWO Revenge with these new Rey Mysterio moves. So anyway, I really like I really like some of this stuff here. So as you can see, I'm already repositioning the camera, different camera angle here. Actually, I take that back. Let me, uh, I wanted to go to, so I'll do the same thing for this. Evanese lands, lands flush, we'll go 1835. All right, so I think this is a great spot for another highlight reel thing here. See this awesome fluid, Hurricane Rana, Frankensteiner animation, right? So to me, this is something that I think you really want to be able to see fluidly and not, you know, have a lot of wonky camera angle stuff going on. You know, be able to see these guys take this cool spot. So anyway, he's got him up. Um, some spot, I mean, you could even like cut to an angle here and get a, a different angle of him climbing the ropes if you want. I mean... You have options. You obviously you have 23 seconds. You can go with several camera cuts, but I'm just going to use this one angle just for right now, just to save some time, you know. And then you see right here, bam! I get a 
perfect shot of both of them landing there. It's not off to the side, out of out of frame or anything. Evan East lands, and then again right here, about 1835, I think is where we were at. 37 maybe, somewhere in there. We'll get it right. And cut here. And then we'll take that one to 23-21 because I want to get this awesome uh, sailing animation here of him looking like that just destroyed him, you know. That's that's the important stuff with, uh, with wrestling. Selling is everything. So, you know, you guy takes this big bump off the top rope and he's immediately clutching the lower back here. You see he even changes hands. But now because of this camera angle... Which again is the whole point of this. He's clutching the back, bam, he's down. Okay, so anyway, again, we're gonna save some time. Um, give you a couple different ideas there. Actually, I needed to, I didn't save that one. All right, we'll go ahead and fix it real quick. I didn't mean to save that, then code it, and I didn't. So we'll, uh, we'll just save this one clip. Alright, that'll work. So we're just gonna encode this one's highlight little clip three. Alright. Well that's encoding. The next thing I'm going to talk about why this is encoding, and I'll get to it, is going back to the idea of uh, the ATD. Yeah. Pain wrestling, which I, I didn't get that to pop up textually like I wanted to. But we'll see it here in just a second. Let's kind of build some offense here real quick. Down he goes. That was impressive, Cole. He better stay right where he is. Boom! <laughs> Comes up big with the reversal. Frankensteiner! Nicely done. This is what makes him one of the best in the business. I'll use this signature because this is got Nobody pin does on it. it. Quite like so anyway, I want to talk about like the pin falls, okay? Super kicks yeah, him. Got got the Johnny Gargano super kick it. there goes into the cover. All right, so as you see there, I use resiliency to get out of that quickly. So I'm just gonna skip past the super kick itself for this one and go into right, right about here where he's crawling for the cover. Because the cover is what I want for this one. Obviously, if this was a match that I was recording for show, it would have the full super kick in it. But obviously, this isn't so much about game cam as it is about HUD. Um, I've, I've had people confirm this for me in conversation. I'm a firm believer of it. And this goes for submissions as well. Um, we could talk a little bit more about submissions later on. But for this particular example, the thing that I want you to know is that when people are watching your call show, if you're putting on a call show on YouTube or Twitch or anything like that to this nature, when that pin bar or when the submission wheel, or even if you don't do the submission wheel and you do the button mashing mini game for submissions, no matter how you do it, when those HUD elements are on screen, people will stop watching the actual gameplay and they will watch that HUD and it breaks their immersion as a viewer. And, I mean, you can dispute this with me and debate this with me if you want. I mean, but this is more than just my opinion. This has been, again, this has been verified by other people's opinions that I've spoken to about the same topic. When a guy goes for a cover on a wrestling video game and that 
that pin circle pops up. People are watching the will to see whether or not you kick out. In real life wrestling, there's no will that people see on screen. They see a guy go for a cover after a big move and the referee counts and then they wonder if the guy's kicking out or not. It's a, you know, the whole thing with this whole realm of call wrestling is trying to get people to buy into our characters the way that we do when we watch WWE or New Japan or whatever wrestling promotion you watch in real life. There's no reason that call wrestling can't have the same suspension of disbelief. But as the people putting on these shows, it's our suspension of disbelief that matters. We have to make it where, you know, people don't know that you have resiliency active and it's easy for you to just press the left bumper to kick out of this move. You know, that super kick is a signature move. It should be considered close to a finishing move. Maybe it is a finishing move for somebody else. You know, Evan East, you know, for all you know, as a wrestling fan, shouldn't have kicked out of that if this is late into a high profile match, right? That's that's what near falls are all about in wrestling. So anyway... So he goes into the cover here. And what we want is to, to really capture this moment. And this is why a highlight reel to me is super critical for this kind of stuff. And sometimes really kind of, these kind of pinfall moments, I don't mind the rope. The rope's kind of being in the way here. So we'll go ahead and just leave this for sake of time saving again. So you see Reed crawling in, goes into the cover, shoulders are down. You can see both shoulders are down there. It's actually a cool angle. Referee goes into count. One, two. Is Evan East going to kick out here? He gets the shoulder up. And you see right there, Bam gets the shoulder up clean. Referee does the cool little animation where he signals that it's only a two count. Reed rolls through. And uh, anybody who's played 2K since 2K16 knows that we have a bunch of other like, near fall animations that just look even better. There's a lot of like little cool gestures there. You can get like arguing with the referee or the roll over with his hands on his hips, you know, pounds the mat out of frustration, all kinds of cool stuff that could happen there also. And again, um, nine out of 10 times, the game cam doesn't capture that stuff. Like here, like, yeah, you still see the shoulder come up. You still see the referee do the motion, right? But at least here, you want to probably just go to like right here. I'd say at least go about right here if you're staying close to game cam. That way you can see the shoulder come up. <clears throat> so anyway, we'll encode that one as highlight real clip four. All right, and right here, guys, I'm going to take a short break from it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of this match, open up the video editor so I can access these clips and see about getting that full preview. All right, so as you see here now, we're at the uh, the creations, create a video part of the menu. I don't know how many people have entered this menu before, but underneath of here, um, if you go down to new, under that, you're just where all your cutscenes are. A lot of us use cutscenes for promos or backstage stuff. All, there's tons of tons of things you can use cutscenes for. That's a completely different topic for another video. But anyway, so what we're going to do is go into highlight reel here and see if this is the same. To see here, our uh, our four clips are here, which is good. So I'm going to go into the first one and see if this takes me to where I want it. See how much this has changed or not. And I should, what I should be able to do is just get a full preview of it from here. Because that's how it was in 2K18. You just go in here and you would hit the, uh, go to the encode menu, hit preview. And it takes care of it for you fairly quickly. And then from there, usually it was just a matter of uh, when you pull into your computer video editing program to just use your pan zoom crop tool to, uh, to, oh, I gotta switch controllers. Yep, here we go. So what we're going to do, and again, this is just your, it'll be like your start button, your menu button, the encode. 
I'm just gonna hide the controls here. Oh, well, let me do it without. So let's see what the preview does. Okay, so preview. You can see here. This is just recording a game cam. I guess I'm gonna have to go back in and reset the uh, reset the camera angle again, which isn't too much of a problem. It's actually a good learning experience for me as well. So anyway. We'll just go back in and take care of this from the start here. What about right there? Wait a second. About right there. Snap mirror. Arm bars are over there. Another thing that I, I should have mentioned uh, about submissions and about the uh, the rest holds like this is that um, one thing I like to do. Is see once you get him into the uh, position here where he's got the hole applied right, you can easily reuse this because obviously this is a recycled clip here. It's just a, a looping animation until the hole's broken one way or the other. What you can do is uh, you can continuously use multiple camera angles of that same hold. But what I do with like a submission hold is I'll get like three or four different angles on that same hold and then in my timeline on my video editor I will loop it consecutively so it makes it look like the hold is uh, applied differently it, it stretches it the time out on it time lapses it a little bit and then on your on your commentary for that match especially say like uh, if the guy applying a hold is a real methodical technical or maybe a submission based wrestler then you can be like oh you know uh, wrestler X He's got that hold in locked pretty deep, you know. Is wrestler Y going to be able to get out of this hold? What, what it's excruciating. What, you know, how, what kind of this? What is this doing to him? Is it breaking him down? Is this match over with? You can really sell what those submissions are doing to the other guy once you are in that position where you can loop it. And if you get like a really good close-up camera angle, yeah, I'll go ahead and zoom real close in on this, just for example here. Say, okay, so he's got him snap mirrored here, and you know. Yeah, just a basic example here, you know, you can see, oh, Reed's got this armbar locked in tight. The referee's checking on Evan East, asking him if he wants to continue or not. Evan East has got that kind of grimace on his face there. And, I mean, you this is, again, it's all imagination. You have to use your, your imagination to really sell this. And then, you know, people, believe it or not, watching your call show will buy into it based off of the way that you respond to this and the way that you can... Add that layer of suspension of disbelief and immersion is simply by getting the right camera angle and then you reacting to these camera angles when you're doing commentary or whoever is doing your commentary is talking about it. Very simple stuff, guys. I, I wish I could make this you know sound more elaborate than it is, but it's very, very simple. So, you know, we'll just use this camera angle here. So anyway, we're gonna do here in Going for the snap mare here, but we'll just kind of get it from this camera angle here. So snap mare him over, whip him down in position. Even from this angle, I mean, you you, you see here like Reed's got this fierce look on his face, and Evan East is like almost pleading with him. This is the cool animation on his arm bar. Anyway, so. Basically, we got our camera set now. We want to go to the encode menu. Here, we're just going to hit preview. You can see the animation run course now. It's that front chancery neck lock on him. Boom, snap mare. Rolls him down. And as you notice here, this is another key thing that I should point out to you. If you don't use a lot of highlight reel, highlight reel records at a lower frame rate. It records in almost like a slow motion. This is something that uh, was, was noted in 2K18, and it looks like it's the same in 2K19. Um, in your video editor, there is a way to fix this and match the speed of your clip. And I will talk about that when we get to the part of this video where I'm uh, editing it in video editor on uh, Movie Studio. So anyway, that clip would be done. So normally here, like on my recorder, as I detailed my recorder to you guys earlier, um, I'm letting it record all the way through here. But on mine, normally, I would stop recording right here. 
that way because you know you want to keep some of these clips you don't want them to be like a 15 minute clip but it's really only like 20 seconds so anyway we'll just go ahead and move on to the next one here what i'm gonna have to do when i take this into the video editor is i'm actually gonna have to chop this up a little bit in the different clips so you have to bear with me a little bit on that i'll try to uh, save a little bit of time with it if i can but i wanted you guys to see how highlight reel in the game breaks down step by step was the, the goal of this video so you can you know kind of reference this and if you needed anything as long as far as that goes um while i'm thinking about it let me open discord to see what the other questions were right? we didn't have a lot here he said Different viewpoints, we talked about that. Camera follows, talked about that. How long, and yeah, we've talked about that. Okay, so there's not really been any other questions other than that. All right, we should be good there then. Okay, so same thing here, we're gonna cut. Oh wow, this highlight real clip, actually, it didn't record the clip from where I wanted. Interesting. They are supposed to have that whole time Topic on Hilo in it, so we're not going to use that clip. I'm not going to waste time on that one. So we'll go to clip three of them. And at this rate, actually, I think what I may do, because um, this video is going to run a little long as is, what I'm going to do is uh, when I talk about doing custom edited highlight reel spots, I'm probably going to break that down as a second video, I think. So uh, this video doesn't run on way longer than it needs to. But anyway, we'll go ahead and finish up this part of this video talking about the uh, these next two clips here and see how they look. All right, this one should be good. This is this one from, from here. So we'll go ahead and take it from there. You can see here in the editor, this is actually only 16 seconds. So it only encoded it. I guess what happened on that other one was I, that makes sense. I encoded it from where it was only on the outside of the ring. So that does make sense. So what we want here is to take this down to 16. Really like this Frankenstein or Hurricane Rana thing from the top rope. Really cool. 2K19 has a lot of really neat moves in it that I'm really happy with. So we're going to change the camera angle from what we originally previewed this on. We're going to go from this here, because I think it's neat to get it from this side angle. Again, just quickly go to encode menu. From encode menu, you just press, I guess it'll be square for PlayStation, but this is X on the Xbox. This looks like this is actually a little bit faster than the last clip, but nonetheless, here you see, boom, snaps around, bam, Hurricane Rana. And not a bad shot there of Ebony selling. Also, another thing that you can note here is from this angle in your video editor, you can zoom in on your video editor. Like I said, the pan crop zoom tool. Because you're going to zoom out if there was got like my gamer tag and your VC player. You're going to want to zoom out of that stuff anyway. And then like down at the bottom where the display controls and stuff are, that stuff, some of that like where it says like X for preview or whatever, or B for cancel, B for trim menu. That stuff's going to remain, so you're going to have to zoom out some of that stuff anyway, or zoom in past it, I should say. But anyway, um, you know, you can zoom in. My point was you can zoom in there on Ebony selling and save yourself a little bit of time that way, too, unless you prefer to go back into, like, highlight reel and do a second edit. But uh, this, hopefully this video is out before Money in the Bank 3. If not, either way, you'll see my point here that I used a lot of highlight reel on Money in the Bank 3, and there's a lot of shots that I use that specifically sell, like a guy being laid out on the floor, or, you know, different things to that nature. And and honestly, a lot of the times with trying to tell these little stories individually in, in this wrestling realm, is a lot of it is, is just uh, what I always refer to, like, you know, a magician. It's a slate of hand. It's just the right camera angle. You want certain, like if a guy is doing a run in, if a guy is going to jump the wall, jump the barricade, run into the ring with a steel chair and attack one of the participants or attack both participants, 
you know, you want to see those two guys fighting. You don't want to see that guy attack them until the right moment because it gives away the surprise that he's attacking them if you are watching this like you're supposed to be watching it television you're watching the cameras you're not watching it live if you're watching it live you can see the guy run past you but if you're watching it from a television produced standpoint they intentionally keep guys out of frame until the right moment it's the same thing here so you want certain things to remain in or out of frame by choice and uh, it, it really lends to your to your story so here, let's go ahead and just switch the angle around on, on this. Again, we used a different camera angle last time reviewing it, so we're going to go to a different angle here. Uh, we should be pretty good with our free counting there. And in code, preview read crawls in, hooks the leg, shoulders are down, Ebony should be out, it's a super kick. One, two, ref gets the, oh, the two count only there. Easy peasy. As I say. So anyway, that's three clips there recorded. Um, another thing, though, I don't know this has changed on 2K19, but I'll show you where this is at because it is important to know if it hasn't changed on 2K18. I want to say on 2K17, but definitely on 2K18, you could only record 20 clips if you uh, you label them numerically like I do. 20 clips was your maximum. What you have to do is you have to go into your options, go to deletion utility. And you just have to kind of tab over till you find it. It's usually will be highlight real match replay or highlight real replay data match. Just select all of them and delete. Always free up those highlight real slots as soon as you got the clip saved, recorded, and ready to be imported for later. So that's that. Um, what we're going to do for the next part of this, again, I'm going to stop recording here just for a moment to save some time. The next time I pull this up, um, we're going to talk about, you know, the actual editing process. So what I'm going to do is I'll be recording a screen capture, uh, live screen capture of my computer desktop for OBS and uh, for the uh, movie studio. So you can actually see me importing these clips into movie studio. And that will be how I conclude this video. And then, of course, uh, hopefully this will get some questions and some discussion going on the call workshop. So we'll see how that goes, guys. But anyway, I wanted to go ahead and cover just a brief overview of that there. And I'll get some more detail and elaboration on some of this when I get to the more advanced highlight reel video to come. But anyway, I'll cut to the next uh, step of this process right now. Start recording. All right. So we're back, guys. What I've done here, I went ahead and skipped around a loop to save some time. This is just a, uh, a condensed look at what was already uh, recorded, what you saw me recording on the last couple parts of this video. So I'm going to scale down the timeline here on Movie Studio for just a moment. Um, basically, what I do when I record and edit my matches on 2K... And everybody does this a little bit differently. Everybody's going to have their own methods to this, and that's totally fine. I start with a very skeleton form track here, as you can see. Um, what, what you're looking at is this is a video track. This is an audio track. Track three is video. Track four is muted audio. Um, basically, your first track is going to be the basic gameplay, the the main gameplay that you record that is not highlight reel. And that's why, excuse me, track two audio is the actual in-game audio here. So I actually still, uh, you can tell I haven't played 2K19 very much because the in-game commentary is still going to be on in this clip. So you can see there, I've edited some of the HUD out here a little bit in the clips as well, both on the highlight reel tracks and on the game tracks. Um, I do want to point out that the reason that I mute the highlight reel audio here on the fourth audio track is because highlight reel does not record audio. So that's why it's important when you get to this stage with highlight reel 
to make sure that your volume up here on the game track is up and that is your main audio track so everything you do down here i've split this track here to make sure that it syncs up properly uh, and i'm going to talk about that a little bit in just a second too um you want to make sure that this video matches this audio here that's that's a very important part of this step so anyway i mentioned before that the highlight reel records at a lower frame rate it's slower so what we do is we drag this over and we're going to hold control and scroll backwards so it speeds that clip up now i mean that's gonna be fundamentally the same i can't speak for a lot of other editing software but you should be able to uh crunch or expand a video track either way like that um, you might have to do some research on what video program you're using, but ideally that is what you have to do with these highlight reel clips because if you try to line them up otherwise, your highlight reel on 2K18, 2K19, it, it records at that lower frame rate and you can't fix that otherwise. So once you've done that, this is where uh, alpha channeling or chroma key green screening type stuff comes into handy. This is another reason why your main uh, your main track is your is your main gameplay. So what I do is I right click on it, I go to switches, and I mute this track to make sure that the audio isn't muted. But you mute that top track. So when you go back and you preview it, you should be able to see right here. There you go, and then you can see here again. Here's a good. A good example of of why high reel looks better than the game cam because you see right here there's no hud there's no uh mini game on screen that would distract the people watching your show but when it flips back here there it is bright and clean view so anyway that's that's a good look at that. and then what we're going to do here is just drag this over and the same thing you can see here we're going to just drag it back <coughs> excuse me i mentioned this in the last video too about submissions and chain wrestling in the game i'll show you it here now that i've got this pulled up so it's just going to continue this hold what you can do easily see you know if you want to make this arm bar look like this is really early in the match here you know he's really cranking this arm bar all you got to do is just select these two tr these two videos now and simply copy and paste and like i said now if you've used highlight reel and you've got multiple angles instead of just this one angle that i shot for tutorial purposes you can loop angles here and find it you can reverse it. you can do lots of different things with it you can stretch it out a little bit further if you want but as you see there that's added another instead of just uh, this 20, it's like 10 seconds there, that added another 20 seconds to this hold. So if you, like, again, it's a submission-based guy, there's some kind of a scenario you're trying to tell here where a guy's, you know, in this hold and it's doing damage to him. Now it's completely up to your discretion and your imagination there. So anyway, we're going to move on from that clip. I'll just show you these other last couple examples here, and this will wrap this up pretty quickly. And then, uh, like I said, we'll save some more advanced highlight reel stuff for another video that I'll do here soon. But anyway, again, this was this shot that I, I really liked of this this uh, Avalanche Frankensteiner Hurricane Rana move. Uh, all you know, top rope type moves, high impact moves, definitely are all worth getting better camera angles on. And you can see here, like in the clip, I didn't really talk about this. I think as I was recording it. But it kind of cuts to a custom camera angle here. You can see where it goes to an in-game camera angle. But then it immediately goes back to game cam. And then it'll do it again here. It'll go back to there's that camera angle again. But back to game cam. Like, it, it immediately just flickers between the two. You have no control over this. But when you add highlight reel to it. Now this one should be a little bit different. We're going to add highlight reel to this here. The same thing. I just go out and unmute that out. Highlight reel. Already got a little bit different camera angle for it here. 
the impact. Look at that tremendous ring presence. Very impressive. I mean, you know, as long as long as when you're uh, you're editing these clips, you're conscious and paying attention to the audio. Make sure that audio is synced up well. And that looks like that's pretty clean. I've had times in videos where the audio doesn't perfectly match up. There are remedies for that. You can sometimes just go back in, layer over some more crowd noise if you have to, and uh, you know make sure your commentary is loud enough on the video where it masks it. There's ways around it where you can kind of kind of bandaid over that kind of stuff. Ideally. It's a matter of just, again, your audience being completely immersed in your experience. That way, if there is a blemish like that, that they're not looking for the mistakes. They're going to go, wow, this guy had some really cool camera angles on this show that I wasn't expecting. Wow, I, I wasn't expecting those moves in that spot because I've never seen somebody edit things like that together before. You know, th this looks unique to me. This is different to me. When people start talking about those good things. When you don't give them new things to look at and talk about, then, you know, when people start getting bored watching something, and then they start looking at the bad things about it. And and that's not the goal with this. This is a creative process. And all of us, it doesn't matter at this point how much highlight reel that you're using or how much highlight reel that you're not using. Everybody is putting in a fair amount of work on these shows. And everybody, you know, deserves their due credit for the amount of work that you are most likely putting in on your show. But you're going to get that credit tenfold when you're putting in this little bit extra work. And I mean, now, how many highlight reel clips and edits you want to use on a show, that's totally going to be up to you. Because I can tell you from first-hand experience, the more invested you get into this process, that your show production is going to stretch out, and it's going to take you a lot longer than it used to to put these shows together. Well, I used to I used to be able to crank out seem like three or four shows a month. Now it's taken me sometimes a month to two months to put out a show now. So I mean, it, it's definitely a sacrifice. You're sacrificing a lot for production here, but at the end of the day, if you want people to be impressed, I mean, you know, they say you can't rush art. So anyway, I've got this one last clip here. This is just uh, him crawling into this cover. We'll look at the main clip here first. Nobody does it quite like got the shoulders down. Right here, you can see the pin HUD is still on screen. So here, what I want to do is drag this one over. And this one looks like it's actually meshed up pretty well, too. I may not have to clean it up too much, but we'll take a look and see. Sometimes highlight reel can be a little tricky, as I mentioned. So here... Nobody does it quite like got the shoulders down. Yeah, he's got a lot of Okay. And you can see there, I thought maybe the clip was going to be a little bit off, but actually, I, I think pinfall clips are, are good practice because that audio of the ref counting and slapping the mat really tells you if you're on cue or not with your audio. I mean, and that's pretty clean right there. One more time, we'll look at it. And I mean, you see that that took just a couple of seconds to get that lined up, but immediately that immediately to me the camera angle, um, not seeing the HED, all that good stuff, looks believable compared to this, where you can see all of that on screen. And uh, to me, it's just, it, it's, you know, it's a matter of if you have the resources to do this. What I told Sean Walsh a while back when he first started getting into Highlight Reel was this. You know, if you're not going to do Highlight Reel for every aspect of a match, you should at least do it for your pinfalls. And you should at least do it for, like, your chain grappling and submissions. Because those have those bigger parts of the HUD that you can't cut out. And those are the things to me that stick out like a sore thumb to people. So, you know, at least do it for those parts. Um, 
again, whether you do or you don't, it's completely up to you. And I'm not going to uh, seek out your YouTube videos and, and give them dislikes out of spite if you don't take my advice. But I, I can tell you firsthand from talking to people who've started using Highlight Reel, and since I've started using Highlight Reel, that uh, I've got a lot more likes, a lot more comments, more views consistently. I'm getting feedback. I'm getting people messaging my Facebook page, telling me that they, they, they would love to be a part of ECW because they're big fans of it now. Um, I mean, my the interest has, has doubled, honestly, in the last three or four years since I started using Highlight Reel on 2K17. And I started using it on 2K17 pretty late. It was probably around, oh, I want to say in, in real time, this was somewhere around October, October of 20, uh, 2017, it sounds like, yeah, 2017. Because uh, the first show that I really used Highlight Reel on was Prelude to Violence. And and it worked. It, it went over very well. And I, I started using it even more since then. So guys, that's all I really wanted to touch on here for this introductory video. Um, I wanted to kind of show you the recording process. I took a little bit of extra time on the recording process. So I didn't want to drag this part of it out on the editing process. Because there's not a whole lot just a brief glimpse like this to show you but like i said i will do more videos i just posted about it on the facebook group for the call workshop please comment on that um please comment on this whatever give me your info or your uh, your input and let me know what more you want to see for this kind of stuff because i am more than happy to do it if the interest is there uh that's the primary focus for me i mean i don't want to do this if two or three people want it I want to know how many people are interested in knowing this. I will gladly break down things like how to go into Highlight Reel and do green screen. It's my Bluetooth speaker just shuts off there, excuse me. Um, green screen tips and tricks, how you can use uh, entrance motions for that kind of stuff, how you can use the victory animations for that kind of stuff. There's a bunch of like hidden things in Highlight Reel that all you have to do is just experiment with. And it's all right here for us to use. But I will gladly break more of it down in a video like this. So just let me know what you guys would like to see. Anyway, that's what I, that's all I got for the uh, the introduction to highlight real video, as this one's going to be dubbed. Anyway, uh, reach out to me with any other questions you guys have. And thanks for watching it.